All right, so today I'm going to talk to you about um, the application of network theory to legal systems and actually progressing these systems. So first of all, what the heck is a network, right? We hear this all the time, we go to networking events, we think of the social networks that we're on, like Twitter, Facebook, and these kinds of things, but what's a network really? Um, does anybody want to take a stab? No pressure, you don't have to, but... No, okay, awesome. <laughs> uh, so a network, ooh. What happened there? Is it? Did I press a button I wasn't supposed to? Yeah. All right, we're good. So a network is just a group of interconnected things, and these things are called nodes or vertices. Um, so this could be absolutely anything. It could be hardware devices, it could be business units, government units, legal hackers, um, absolutely anything at all. Uh, criminals, anything. So this is just um, a network. Uh, so pretty simple network in comparison or relative to some of the massive ones um, you might see and are about to see. Uh, so you can see here it's just an interconnected group of people. Um, and you'll see these colored blotches. These colored blotches are just uh, communities within a network. So within a network there might be something, you, you could just call it sub-networks. Um, there's uh, an official name for that and it's actually just communities. Um, and these are groups within an existing network that have um, their, own, their own culture or their own information or something that makes them uh, unique in their own right but still a member of the bigger network. So this is one of those massive, massive networks I was talking about. Um, so this is crazy intimidating. Um, this is, it looks like a brain's neural network and uh, that's actually okay and makes a lot of sense. Um, the reason being that our brains are actually operating on a very same uh, basis in terms of network and how information travels. Um, so you might think of like the network, uh, neural networks, um, very similar application. And if you, if you look to the bottom right corner, uh, you'll see that it's zoomed in and actually it's not that crazy um, when you actually zero in on what's happening. You can see that there's um, a node there in the center and it's connected to several other nodes and then that eventually branches out to the entire network. So networks are absolutely everywhere and everything that we do, we see, everything's interconnected and belongs to a network in some capacity. And that's why they're so important. So we'll take a quick look at the analysis of networks, and in mathematics that's called graph theory. Um, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk us through a few key uh, principles in this uh, area of mathematics um, called centrality and connectivity. Um, to me, these are amongst at least the very most important aspects of these concepts. Um, so what it means to be central to a network for a node is meaning that it has the shortest number of links to the rest of the connections within a network. And uh, that's also where the connectivity comes in. So the weight of the connectivity between these nodes um, tells us their impact and their importance or centrality to the rest of the network. Um, so we can assume that the NSA is all over this stuff. Uh, so that's why this dude's here. <laughs> little hacker buddy. Um, yeah, so in a legal application or in legal systems, the most common one that everybody's probably heard of is in criminal investigation. So where we're looking at the activity, the organizations, the individuals that are involved in uh, how crime is uh, moving forward. So in whatever capacity that might be, um, so a deeper look at that, often network analysis or graph theory and graph mathematics is involved. Um, so at a very high level, some of the things that uh, graph theory can apl be applied to and is applied to regularly, um, Rob walked us through some of this, I don't know if Rob's here today, but he walked us through some of this with regards to human trafficking um, yesterday. Uh, I did some work on a federally funded project a while ago and uh, this was definitely one of the key components to the research involved in actually busting the network uh, that was involved in that case. 
and of course, terrorism. Um, this, is a, this is an image of flight patterns in and throughout the country, drug trafficking. Again, you name it, the, the list is absolutely endless. So let's get a bit more granular. And let's think about this at a nitty gritty level. Um, there's tons and tons and tons of applications, uh, but in short, some applications are the passings of bills. So if we look at how bills actually uh, flow through the systems and how they end up turning into legislations and laws that we're actually using, um, that's a network. If we think about uh, judicial citations or co-citation networks, uh, this, this is the application of network theory. Uh, we can actually learn quite a bit there in terms of how organizations are connected or how different uh, nodes in a particular network are connected. Media influence. Um, so this is a big one that I think gets sort of overlooked a lot. Um, I recently watched the O.J. Simpson documentary. Uh, how many here have watched that? Yeah, it's, it's, a, pretty, it's a pretty epic uh, documentary, I think, anyways. Um, and so in that case, um, that's a really good representation of how uh, information can travel to a broader audience and impact something that um, is in a legal system. So in that particular court hearing, we saw how uh, history was unfolding and actually impacting how that case unfolded and the decisions that were met. So there's a pretty incredible example of how you can actually apply this for change outside of legal. Um, I don't know if Daz is here today um, from, M oh yeah, there you are. Hey, welcome. <laughs> um, so he might be able to tell you a bit more about this, um, but in short, MIT partnered with other academic institutions, telecommunication companies, government bodies, and they did an experiment where they looked at populations of disease um, in different communities. And they looked at how it was traveling through these networks, yes, networks everywhere. Uh, so they looked at that and then they were able to assess, um, in a population where the disease had not yet traveled, they were able to assess which nodes or which people in that particular population were most central to that network and would end up being uh, prevalent sources of the spread of that disease. They were then able to target those individuals and vaccinate them before the disease got there and were actually able to, I don't know what the exact number is on the statistics, so I'm not going to say it, um, but it was a pretty high percentage of um, prevention of the spread of this disease. Um, so in looking at that, I just want to close with um, asking everyone to sit back and sort of think about the breadth of the legal hackers network um, across the world. So if you look at you know, the new chapters that are coming up in Dubai, um, in Nigeria, these are new chapters that are helping to take the Legal Hackers Network and put it all over the globe. And it's not a numbers game if you have this information, it's just about connection, about connection and really understanding what uh, we, what we want to accomplish, whether that be holistically um, or in the individual chapters. Uh, there's really a lot that can be accomplished with just a few people. Uh, so thank you so much. And um, if there are any questions, <laughs> that, was, that was the end. <laughs> <laughs> So the question was, what software do you use to make the graphs? So there are endless, there are endless softwares. I personally did not use them in the making of these graphs. Um, but you can use, so uh, a really accessible one um, is Google's Data Studio. So I don't know if anybody here has heard of that. Um, it's fairly new. I think it's still in beta testing. Uh, but it's a free platform. They want all of your information, <laughs> always. So uh, you can just get on there, throw it up, and play around. Um, so that's a really good one. Um, and of course, there's endless, endless platforms that you can use. As somebody who's really interested in like knowledge management stuff, and I don't know to what extent you're like an expert in network theory, have you I, seen anyone in the legal tech space doing something very cool internally, like knowledge management, like mm. app, applying you know, network theory as kind of crowdsourcing knowledge within an enterprise or legal? Totally. Theory?
Um, so the question was whether or not um, I have personally talked to or um, seen anybody using these kinds of applications of network theory in uh, knowledge management, I guess, within a firm um, or something like this. Um, so personally, no. Um, but that's not to say uh, it's absolutely being done. Uh, that's a great application of how information spreads through uh, a law firm and actually being able to then target what central pieces of resources are so important to um, the operations of that firm. Um, so I would say absolutely it's probably being done. And if I come up with any examples, I'll get back to you. <laughs> are we good? All right, well, thank you so much.